Hello Cancer, let's take a look at the long view ast astrologically for you. So um, Pluto has now moved into Aquarius, January 20th. And this means it's going to last for 20 years, another huge transformation of an area of your life. Let's talk about what Pluto did in Capricorn for us Cancers, because it wasn't easy. So Capricorn is normally our seventh house. If you are born with a different ascendant, then that's the more accurate one to look at. So this would be relevant for Cancers, but also Cancer rising. So um, Pluto going through the 12th, uh, sorry, through the seventh. Oh, so it has ripped apart many relationships since 2008, right? Your idea of what is a marriage, what is a close partnership, what is intimacy changed quite a bit, I'm sure. Um, the other thing that we don't talk about much with the seventh house, because usually people think of marriage and love and partnerships is it also represents open enemies. Did you have to deal with that during the last 16 years? And how did you? So I mainly found, because I am a cancer, I mainly found that um, it just brought so many people through my life. Some have survived all those years, obviously and many don't. And it definitely brought, because it's Pluto, it brought a lot of power dynamics to relationships. It brought a lot of, um, well, and cleared out for me, a lot of, let's say, toxic or difficult relationships. And I would say, like, going forward, I have a much, I've restored a much healthier uh, version of how to relate than in a long, long time. So we were tested. So now it's moving into the eighth house, which also isn't the, isn't an easy place because the eighth house is where you really plummet the depths of the soul. You deal with anything taboo, which includes um, sex, death, other people's money. That's the classic. But will there be changes in your sexuality life? Yes. Will you, because it's Aquarius, will you be maybe more open or experimental? More free? Maybe less traditional? Yes. Will you meet a lot of people that are as well? Challenging it? Yes. Um, other people's money is like a huge topic. Um, Pluto in the eighth house, if you had it, you know, in your birth chart versus a transit, it would be somebody with very deep, who's probably had to deal with some situations that the average person doesn't have to, and will never know about because it's plummeting so much of the secrecy and the shadow side of, of people. You might have had to deal with like a crazy lawsuit that nobody will understand, like very few people, you know? That would be a way that it plays out with other people's money. You might have to um, deal with inheritances, uh, wills, stuff like that, because that involves other people's money. If you're a business person or it could be investing, you might be responsible for other people's money. Um, respecting other people's contributions, um, not taking advantage of other people's resources, um, or being, you know, privy to seeing that in others. So that would be one way the classic advice could play out. Um, what I expect though, largely with Pluto in the eighth in Aquarius is a, a massive revolution in how in your belief system about existential matters. Who are we? Why are we here? What is a human? <laughs> you know, are we from other dimensions? 
are we connecting to things far greater than we ever imagined? That's the bigger theme. Um, that would be the bigger theme. So um, I think there'll be a lot of inner revolution with Pluto and Aquarius for Cancers. Be prepared to expand your mind and expand what you ever thought was possible and your sense of self. And it's going to have such a, a great impact. I can't sum up 20 years, you know, in a little video. But these are some of the bigger themes. The next thing going on is that we have Saturn and Neptune in Pisces. And that has been going through the ninth house. Saturn has been in, in the, the ninth house for us for a year, close to a year. Neptune has been there for several years. Saturn has another year, year and a half to go, basing this on January 2024. And Neptune has another two years to go. So both of those activating the ninth house is sort of nice. Um, you've probably been daydreaming and fantasizing of foreign places and foreign lands. Um, open to different cultures, open to different people, open to different belief systems, like s s more spiritual and faith related. Um, ex exploring is a big factor, you know, but when it's Pisces and it's Neptune, the exploring might, might sometimes have taken you on trips and might still, but some of it would also just be inner exploring, like the imagination, the realms of the psyche, the realms of like learning. Yeah. Expanding the mind and expanding to the point of acceptance of everyone because Pisces is the oneness of us all. So it's a really nice placement, I think to be focusing on expanding horizons, bringing in more different types of various people and belief systems and ideas than, than ever before and coming to some sort of, maybe not a complete clarity because it's, it's not about a complete clarity with Pisces. It's more about holding this collective space where we're, we're all one and everything is okay somehow within reason, but you know what I'm saying? You do you, and it's all fine. Yeah, so the um, the next thing that's been going on is Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus. Excuse me, I need some water. So Jupiter has been in Taurus for a few months, and it's got a few more to go. I think it goes into Gemini around May or June this year. Uh, in fact, maybe I should just go check that officially because I have that online. Um, where? Sorry about that for the pause. Um, just want to check exactly when Jupiter goes into Gemini so we know when there's a shift. Uranus goes into um, Gemini in 2026. So we've got a couple more years, but it's been there since 2018. So we're sort of used to this by now. And it's not listing Jupiter. Okay, well, I did check and it's somewhere around the spring. I would say, let's say May. Um, so Jupiter in Taurus goes through our 11th house, which is groups and communities and friendships. So it's only been expanding that. It's been bringing us some stable, reliable people in our lives for the last few months. And it's going to continue for a few more months before it goes into Gemini. And then Jupiter and Gemini in your 12th house will be more, well, that's an effervescent place to have it in the 12th. That's like so much mental activity going on behind the scenes. So you might be getting down to a lot of socializing behind the scenes or in, in interesting groups or different ways or online or something that's less visible. Or you may also be reading like crazy. You might be writing like crazy. You might be doing a lot of mental work behind the scenes. 
But for now, just enjoy that it's in your 11th house and it's bringing you a sense of community and a sense of friendship. Um, Uranus going through that house is a little slightly different story. It's been rocking and rolling that area of friendships and groups for the since 2018. So maybe, maybe you've been feeling a bit frustrated that you want to find like your tribe or your people or your you're loyal to certain groups around you and then it all changes and all like explodes and erratic, you know, something random happens and it, it falls apart or you realize this isn't for me and you leave, but Uranus brings like a randomness to it. And the fact that it's Uranus in that's even talking about your tribes and groups means that they're eccentric or different. They're, they're built around different things. It's not your typical, you know, PTA meetings or your next door neighbors. It might be around some particular gardening interest or hobby. You know, your friends might be um, eccentric or a bit rebellious themselves. Um, what brings you together might not be obvious. And so, um, and yeah, it's very changeable. So, you know... Pardon me, the Uranus and like Taurus wants to have like stable, loyal, these are my people, these are my activities, these are my groups, this is where I live, this this is what I can count on. And Uranus going through there has been like, well, you think you can and then pull. They're gone. That doesn't exist anymore. That place is closed. The thing you loved, oh, it's moved down the road. It's not the same anymore. The same group we had. Oh, People are added, people come and go, people leave. Doesn't feel the same. Reinventing constantly, not having stability. While Jupiter's there, you've you've been able to to gather some of that. But when it leaves in the mid in the spring and it goes back into Gemini and then Uranus is still there for a couple more years, you're gonna see a little more rock and roll in your in your groups and your tribes and your communities. Changes around your communities. So, but like we said, you've already had it there for a couple, for a few years. You sort of know what it's about and it'll, it'll resume. But at least for cancer, Pluto is out of our, op it has stopped opposing us in our relationships and the stability that you've gathered now in your life with people, even if it feels like it's just the beginning of something new, it, it's solid, it's real, it's going to grow better and better if you keep focusing on that. So this is your long view. If you would like a personal reading to really dive in and make sure because of your ascendant, your moon, your different planets, then please message me and we'll set that up.